Peer aggregation support came in release 10. And I already told support uh, 5CC. 5CC means carrier component. One is primary component carrier and four are secondary component carrier. And it support, I already told these many bands. And in release 13, carrier aggregation started in release 10, but in release 13, that is, uh, it started support to two carrier components. So as per release 10, it can support only five carrier component, but as per release 13, it can support 32 carrier component. And in maximum bandwidth, earlier it was 100 megahertz in 5cc and uh, as per release 10 but as per release 13 it can support maximum bandwidth is 640 megahertz so this was about the 4g now comes in the 5g so in 5g how much like uh, how much carrier component it can support it support up to 16 carrier component and if i talk about the bandwidth it this goes to up to 1 gigahertz And in uh, carrier aggregation, we can aggregate ILT and 5G both carrier. Carrier aggregation is not only belongs to the one technology, it can aggregate uh, different technology as well, but in, in LT and 5G only, we cannot go for, uh, carrier aggregation is not support in 2G and 3G. As per my understanding, if anyone have uh, any other understanding, can you please share. Okay. No, that's not possible because we are using the same E node B, G node B, and same EPC. So for 2 g okay. we need to go through RNC and BSC, so which is not possible. Correct. Also, and the bandwidth bandwidth requirement is different in 3G and 4G. Correct. Correct. So uh, th these are the basic understanding. One more thing I missing is missing here. Like, uh, uh, what do you think? All handset will support carrier aggregation, or we have some limitation? No, it's not uh, all handset cannot support only the UV category that belongs to greater than six. Six or seven or eight or nine, 10, 11, something. Those handset only can support the carrier aggregation. So these are the basic understanding about the carrier aggregation and carrier aggregation. If we talk about the type, it is the contiguous and non contiguous. In LT, we have three type of the carrier aggregation also in the 5G as well, I think. We have three type of the carrier uh, carrier aggregation. One is intraband carrier aggregation that also called the contiguous component carrier. Another one is also intraband and it is the non contiguous. And third one is the interband carrier aggregation. So let me make understand you guys why it is called the contiguous and why it is called the non contiguous. So contiguous means let's say we have two bands. So one band uplink frequency is 1710. And downlink frequency is let's say 1730. And another band, we have uplink frequency 1730, and downlink frequency is 1750. Okay, so see here. Whenever uh, whenever this band uh, frequency is uh, ending at the same, another frequency is starting. So both are contiguous. Contiguous meaning is one, one band of the frequency is stopped and another frequency band is started. So that if like we have the L1900 band in our network. Okay. So we have L19 first carrier and L19 second carrier. 2C. So if let's say, let's assume L19 first carrier frequency uplink and downlink is this and L19 second carrier frequency uplink and downlink this then it's uh, it's come under the uh, this is the intra band because both band are the same and both frequency is contiguous so it comes under the contiguous component carrier now assume that l1900 second carrier frequency is started from 1780 and it goes to 1800 now this is not in picture okay so here I can see 1730 and then next frequency started to 1780. So there is the gap of around 50. So this is not the contiguous. That's the reason it comes non, that is the intraband, band are the same here, L1900, but this is not the contiguous. So we can say this is the non-contiguous component carrier. And next one is the interband carrier aggregation. So interband carrier aggregation means 
let's say we have one band that is the L1900 and another band is L2100 that comes under the uh, interband carrier aggregation. Also, we, we do the carrier aggregation between the LT and 5G, so that also belongs to the interband carrier aggregation. Can someone please tell me, uh, like we have one site, okay? The one site L1900 MRBTS is, let's say, X, and uh, for L2100 MRBTS is Y. This can support carrier aggregation or not? There are two MRBTS for both technology. Means both are both E node B are different. So carrier aggregation can support in such case or not? No answer. Uh, I think it support. can support interband can su uh, CA, but it's very complex. Okay. And require more advanced MR uh, uh, transfer receiver. In in interband, always uh, more transmitter is required. Yes. But here my question is not inter interband. Here inter inter E node B. Inter E node B carrier aggregation is possible. See, both so I, not think, I think uh, Ericsson might have some different thing on that, but in Nokia we have to uh, uh, enable act inter E node B carrier aggregation first, then we can create a uh, carrier aggregation of different cells as well. Yes, in Nokia, as for my understanding, it support inter, inter E node B carrier aggregation as well, but here X2 link is required between the two E node B and SRIO link is also required. So it may support everywhere. So th this is the basic understanding about the carrier aggregation. Before going to move on the 5G carrier aggregation, we must have to know these basic things. So that's why I want to uh, go through these things.